This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode number 112 of the Action Movie Guys podcast. I'm your host, Nate, and this is my co-host, Alex Figueroa. And today we are wrapping up our Arnold Schwarzenegger month with a 1985 film called Commando. I've never seen this movie. This was, I know what it is, but I've never seen it. Alex, I'm sure there's not a first time watch, but when's the last time you saw this film? I haven't seen it in a long time. And it's weird because I texted you and everyone on the Patreon that mm-hmm. I, de- I never knew that they had a Commando director's cut until today. I purchased the <laughs> director's cut of Commando Digital. I rented it. All right. So. What? Okay. Without any anything, just real quick. Was it different from what you remember? Actually, it was more, they added more scenes, more action scenes, okay. and a, a little bit more gore. Which All right, so weird. I'm not going to lie. I was going to rent this, but then I ended up just watching it on YouTube for free with subtitles from another country. So this was quite the experience <laughs> for me. Was, like, they were in another language. I don't know what was going on, but it was the same exact movie. So we're going to go ahead and review it. Now, before we do that, you guys already know, we're going to give you some box office numbers, a little bit of budget information. And then, of course, we're going to give you the critics and audience scores from Rotten Tomatoes let you know what people think of this movie in general so alex please take it away with some box office numbers yep so commando from 1985 box office numbers domestic 35 million international 22 million worldwide of 57 million um they don't give us the budget but domestic opening was seven million dollars okay 57 million worldwide I'm, I'm gonna be honest it doesn't seem like it cost a ton you know not, i'm not saying it's low budget but i'm saying it, it probably made a little bit of money because this does have nine kind million of a following oh budget that it definitely made money so yeah there you go all right so it was a moderate little a moderate little hit for arnold this was early on in his career so all right now reviews so i was surprised not that these scores are incredibly high but i was surprised i thought they might be lower because i don't know i just never watched it and whatever but this has a 69 percent critic score so not too bad. And then it has a 67% audience score. So audiences and critics see almost eye to eye on this movie, both near 70%. So it seems like a movie that a lot of people like. So with that being said, it doesn't matter if they like it or not. We don't care because we're going to tell you if we liked it or not. Alex with the director's cut, me with the foreign language dubbed uh, or subtitled version from YouTube. And uh, we'll tell you what we think now. Alex, please take it away with... Arnold Schwarzenegger with one of the greatest character names of all time, John Matrix. That's actually his name. His last name is Matrix. What'd you think? I love the name, bro. I'm not going to lie. I think it's one of the one of the top names for action movies. John <laughs> Matrix is cool. It's a cool name. Such but an anyway, action movie name. It is. It's very, it is. But okay, in terms of uh, Arnold in this movie... All right, so this is Arnold in his prime. Now, you can see the difference between Arnold's acting in this 1985 movie and then later on when we covered, like, The Last Action Hero. The 90s. The, yeah, yeah, in the 90s. You can see he got better with age. With that said, I'm not going to critique him much as in his action because this movie didn't have much dialogue for him. He had one-liners galore in this movie. He was more action oriented. This is where the this is where eighties is at its best in this movie because this is where more action oriented than storyline. Which we're gonna get that in that with the story. But yeah. in terms of Arnold, he was good. Him and Alyssa Milano, which plays Jenny Matrix, that's his daughter. They had good chemistry <laughs> when they were together. It started off Jenny a little, Matrix. <laughs> that's her name, Jenny Matrix. <laughs> I know it's just so weird. Yeah. Um, Jenny and John Matrix. I thought the beginning of the movie started off like a like a TV show, like like very T. Like she puts ice cream in his nose and he grabs and he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So it was like <laughs> like a Full House intro. Yeah. But other than that, Alyssa Milano, Arnold Schwarzenegger had pretty good chemistry as father and daughter. I believed it. I thought they were really uh, good together on screen. Arnold Schwarzenegger as the main character, he was very good. When he was angry, he was angry. When he did the action scenes, it was superb. He was really good. And my man is jacked. I totally forgot 1985 Prime Arnold. When he's yes. in, when he's holding a log, <laughs> like a 30-foot <laughs> a log tree? with one arm, <laughs> yeah. I was like, this dude is jacked. Yeah, look, with that said, I gave him a four. I thought his character was good. I don't think it warranted a five. I think later down the line, when he started to to get it into more acting roles, I think he found his way. So for me, I, I gave him a four. Okay. As someone who's never seen this movie, 
Mm-mm. I'm just going to come right out the bat and say this movie is super weird. This is a weird movie. And there's a lot of times where I was like, is this, am I supposed to be laughing? And I think I was. I think there is sort of a sense of humor mm-hmm. that kind of runs through this movie. And I'm giving everyone the heads up now. If you've never seen it, watch it with that mindset. This is not like a, this is not, I always thought because I'd never seen it. It's just going to be like a first blood you know, or like a, like a serious action movie. So it's not meta, but it's funny. The opening scene, I nearly fell off my couch because (laughs) is him with a chainsaw. And then he walks down a hill and he's holding an entire tree. Let's call it what it is. You set a log. It's a tree. It's like 30, 25 feet, 30 feet long. He's huge. And the very next scene, he's like, feeding a deer some berries and laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and he's eating ice cream. <laughs> and like throwing her the girl in the pool. And you're right. It's like straight out of a 90s sitcom. It's such a jarring because the first like five minutes of the movie is just a bunch of people getting killed. It's like a guy gets shot by the garbage man. And another guy gets shot at the car dealership. And at first I almost texted you and was like, am I watching the right movie? Does this movie just start off with people dying and no talking? And is this wrong or whatever? But it turns out it was right. I guess it's a very weird, like opening way to open a movie. Like here's a bunch of people you don't know. Some people die. And then all of a sudden Arnold's a lumberjack and then he's playing with deer. Anyway, all that to say, I agree with the name. This is one of the most, this is almost feels like the most 80s action movie as possible. It's almost as if they knew in the future people were going to kind of parody that and this is what they're going off of. And I don't mean this in a bad way. If anything, I'm saying they might have been ahead of the game a little bit, you know, when they when they made it. Joel Silver produced it, one you know, a prolific producer. So I'm going to go with you. I'm going to give him a four. I don't think it's the greatest role. You know, obviously a lot of the other ones he had were better than this because you're right. He doesn't have a lot of dialogue. He only talks in one-liners pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I think they're funny. A lot of them are funny. Mm-hmm. I especially like when the guy tells me he's just like, no, and then he shoots him and then the girl is like are you gonna tell me what's going on he's just like no he he doesn't he just like deadpan he didn't have that arnold's charm that he gets later but he still it was still funny to me so i give him a four as well i like the name he's great in the action scenes clearly he picks up an entire phone booth with a guy in it hilarious he flips (laughs) over a car hilarious he's super strong bro this guy when the 10 security guards jump on him on the mall he's just like Bust out of them like he's Incredible Hulk. Incredible. Uh, so, yeah, I'll give him a four as well. Okay, main villain. Main villain is Arius. Or Ar- yeah. Ar- yeah, I think something the, like the that. The dad from Clueless. <laughs> yes. And the bad guy from Adam's Family. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, that's the right. accountant. The, the, but yeah, that's right. David ha- Haida. I, right? I think I said his name. Dan right. Hedaya. Hedaya, yeah. Name. That guy. When it comes to villains, and they're supposed to be Spanish, and then you get someone that's plays a Spanish guy but doesn't sound like a Spanish guy but you know he's acting and trying to be a Spanish guy he is one of the worst villain voices I think I've seen on screen <laughs> like he was trying to be Spanish I guess he is Spanish but that role whatever he did in that role was horrible it was really he bad. doesn't talk like that in real no life. he don't that's the thing yeah he sucked like he was bad, and then you got Vernon, uh, Vermont, uh, Vern, yeah, Vernon Wells. He plays Bennett, which fights him yeah. at the end. So those are the two villains in this movie. Honestly, the main guy who tries to get him sucked. He never fought Arnold. He gets yep. shot through a window with a shotgun. That is it. That's all you get from that character. He stinks. I gave him a one. He is not good. His accent is god awful. But again, this is the 80s. A lot of 80s movies has this whole trope with Spanish people with thick accents that you don't know what the hell they're saying for some reason. But anyway, I'm not going to. And then look, his storyline was weird. His storyline is that John Matrix is him and his team dethroned him from a a Spanish country. And now he kidnapped his daughter so he could go kill the president so he could get reelected in that country. I think that was the storyline. He's like know. overthrown and then he wants yeah. to become in charge again. Yeah. So he hires all these like mercenaries essentially to, and then he wants John Matrix to be the one to do it because he's like the greatest killing machine of all time. Yeah. And then the thing is, Bennett was part of his team and then he faked his death in the beginning. So right. anyway, with that said, he was not good. Gave him a one. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I agree. I, as soon as he, I, I saw him on screen, I'm like, hey, that's the dad from Clueless. And as soon as he opens his mouth, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the heck? What is he <laughs> doing? He's got a terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible accent. So this is what we were talking about. You know, we talked off air about accents in other movies. This was bad. I don't know what, I don't remember what country it's supposed to be. Some Latin American country. Not good. And like you said, he doesn't do, this is a movie that has full of henchmen. 
right? They do all the work. Well, or lack thereof, because Arnold literally kills 100 people. But it's mostly henchmen that do like fight Arnold or that he has to deal with. He barely does anything. This guy's whack. I agree with you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because you said it all perfectly well. I also gave him a one weak villain, but it doesn't not necessarily a detriment to the film, but he's just not very good. All right. Action scenes. All right. Now, this is where the director's cut kicks in. The director's cut gives you more explosions, more gore to the violence in this action scenes, which helped. Again, it's not like a 10 minute clip. You're getting into this. I think they just extended a certain scenes. In terms of the action, action is 80s, man. Uh, there's nothing I could break down in terms of the action film in this. Is it a far fetch? It is one of the most far fetched things I ever seen. But it's so cool because I grew up with this movie. Like, it, like it's funny. Like we did a show back then, which I want to bring back for the lives. Like when you see something, nostalgia kicks in, and you remember when you were a kid when you see it. Yeah. I always remember Commando with like me, my dad, and my mom watching it in the morning, like on TV, and it's awesome. It's a great movie when you look at it from an action standpoint, right? Like they kidnap his daughter. My man pushes a Bronco down the hill. <laughs> I chose the. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. It's like, and the thing is, is like, it's not far fetched because you know Arnold is a weightlifter. Like he could pretty much push this car really down oh. a hill. He could carry a tree. You know, he does all this stuff. Yes, he flips over a porch. Like that's so hilarious. He rips a seat out of a car, which is hilarious. Yeah. yeah, and then, the phone booth part was just the best. Yeah, and he picks then, it up over his head like like Ultimate Warrior and just. And yeah, it. and then he throws it. And then all the scene is that he holds a guy by his leg over a cliff. <laughs> and then he goes, just to let you know, this is my weakest hand. And I'm yeah. like, this is hilarious. Like, he's just holding him. And then he goes, I lied. And then he drops him. Like, stuff like that. And the action is yeah. very good. Like, explosions are very well. Actually, looks very not C. And again, it's not CGI back then. So you got everything pr- practical. And then I loved it. I thought it was good. He puts on all the makeup. And he has all the guns and, the, and that big rocket launcher it's pretty cool look i can't can't go more but the director's cut is really good remember when he goes in the shed yep and he gets the saw and he throws the saw and he cuts the dude's head and he throws it on the other guy that got a little extended so you got to see him cut the dude's head off you got to see the one go right into the guy's throat and he's it's a little more graphic out. yeah very more graphic so that was pretty cool and then when he go, throws the thing at, at, at bennett and he goes let out some steam bennett <laughs> he's just there like like that yeah. that was pretty cool and Anyway, with that said, I gave it a five. Can't go wrong giving it a five. Yeah, so there's a plenty of action, which is good. It is mostly of the goofy variety, in my mm-hmm. opinion. You're right. Very 80s, though. The moment that I said, okay, this movie is going to be absolutely ridiculous is the scene where he's on the airplane and he's, like, trying to get out off the airplane. Oh, and he yeah. climbs onto the wheel and then, like, it starts taking off and he's, like, 100 feet in the air. And he just drops on his butt into water and just gets up and he just gets up and walks away like nothing happened. If you fall 100 feet onto water like that, it's going to be like falling on concrete. You're probably going to compress your spine. You know, you might at least break your tailbone. Nah, not Arnold. He just falls in the water like it was a soft mattress and walks off. I said, "Okay, I know what I'm in for here. So once that kicks in. Then it's a little bit more fun. I had fun with the action scenes. I agree. Nothing is too spectacular. It's very, you know, like as far as the way it's shot, you know me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a style, uh, a style whore for lack of a better term. Like I'm always good for a stylish scene. This doesn't really have style, but it has a lot of action, a lot of substance and it's, it's entertaining. It's very entertaining. With all that said, I gave it a four. Um, I'm just below you. I thought it was good, but nothing like incredible, very eighties, very over the top, but a good time. I had a good time when the action scenes were going. They, they were they were fun. So a four for me. Okay, storyline. All right. Well, generic storyline, right? You know, a bad guy comes, takes his, you know, wipes out his team. Then they come for yep. the main guy, takes his daughter. He has to do a, you know, something to get her back. But then something goes wrong, and now he's after them all. Typical storyline, man. Like nothing crazy, nothing outrageous. But it was, you know what? What I liked about it, it was simplicity, but it flowed. It, it didn't. Yeah. It didn't have like stupid that you're just there going, "Oh, come on, really? You're gonna do that?" Like it actually worked well. Just that the villain was written poorly. Then, mm-hmm. but again, this is '80s. You you got certain movies that they have good action movies, right, with a good villain. But then you got other ones that just not as good. And you know what? With this movie, I'm gonna say it was a decent storyline. I don't think it was good. I don't think it was great. I don't even think it was perfect. I just thought it was a decent storyline for this type of story. So I gave it a two out of a five. 
fair. Wow. I'm, this one, I'm actually a little bit higher than you, but I actually agree with your description. I think you hit the nail on the head with everything. It is very simple, very straightforward. You don't need a PhD to figure out what's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought this, the way the story was told was a little wonky. Like I said, that beginning is weird. I don't I don't like the way the movie starts. I don't like that it just starts with random people dying that it seems like there's for no reason. Like the car, the car dealership guy. I'm like, what the heck is... And it's not that everything doesn't get kind of explained, but it's just a weird way to start, in my opinion. It was, it was weird. But what I did like about it was I liked that kind of sense of humor that runs throughout the whole thing. They're like, look, guys, it's like they took a huddle and they said, look, this script is very bonkers. It's very over the top. <laughs> one guy, a one man, yeah, killing machine. You know what I mean? What if we just inject it with a little bit of humor? And that's what put it over for me from a two to a three. So I gave it a three. I thought it was solid. I would stop short of calling it an action comedy and more so an action movie with some comedy, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was, you know, but you're right. There's nothing to write home about. No one has any great dialogue. There's no great, like, speeches. This is not, you know, this is far from Arnold's best. Like, I feel like Arnold movies, and I think you might agree, especially the ones we reviewed and even some we haven't yet. He gets these action movies with, like, really good plots. Like, mm-hmm. the plots in his movies are great. And I would say eight times out of ten. You know, movies like Predator, Terminator, Terminator 2, uh, True Lies that we reviewed. Like, these plots are great. And then everything else might be good, might be bad, whatever. This one falls on the lesser end as far as, like, storylines of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. So, I gave it a three. Okay, overall. All right, look, overall... <sighs> This movie is good. I don't think it's great. I don't even think it's perfect, but I think it has the blend of everything, right? You have the blend of, fe- you know, you feel for him for his daughter because you still the relationship build up. They have comedy there because it's 80s and it worked very well with his one liners, tons of one liners in the movie. Then you're going to like this movie. Tons of action scenes in this movie. And of course, you get to see all the ridiculousness with Arnold. They're using his his brutality of muscular. And you see him ripping doors out and, and doing all this ridiculous stuff that no, no normal human or even a body lifter would do in real life, really. But that's the whole point of movies, right? Just making a, a, yeah. an action character. I thought this movie is good. And I, you know, it's hard to say. And I don't know if you're going to agree with me, but we're going to find out. I think this movie holds up. I think it holds up very well for right now, present time. It's We don't get movies like this anymore. Honestly, every movie so far that we reviewed in present time, besides the John Wicks, because that was like the most basic, basic uh, plot line, everything has to have a PhD. It has an over-top plot line, <laughs> all these yeah. great actors, and then they have to think out the action, whereas it's, just not, it's not fun action anymore. I think this movie... To me, holds up. I think you get the, the action scenes are very not thought out, but they were fun. It, it was just a fun action movie. You could sit down, have popcorn, drink a beer, and you go, wow, this is pretty cool. Arnold doing what he does best is entertaining you with action movies. So anyway, with that said, I gave it a three overall. I think this is a good movie and it still holds up. Yeah, we have the same overall score. I'm also yeah. at a three. And one thing you said there that I will 100% agree with you is that it holds up. Just a little bit ago, I mentioned, I think the filmmakers might have been a little bit ahead of the curve on this one. Because to me, this feels like if someone right now made an 80s action movie parody, you know what I mean? Or an homage, maybe not even a parody. Let's say an homage. Like, I love 80s movies. I grew up on 80s movies. I want to do an 80s action movie. This is like the movie they would probably make. You know what I mean? If this looked like, I mean, I watched it in very bad quality on YouTube. But if there was like a 4K super clean version it, and it looked new, it, it, it's, it's a movie that feels like it could be made now and you would look at it and say, wow, this is like an 80s throwback movie. So in that regard, I think it holds up because it's self-aware already of what of what it is. There are a lot of 80s movies that are not self-aware, right? Like they are 80s movies, uh, Rambo 3, for example. Rambo 3, there's no humor in Rambo 3. Like it's very serious. It thinks everything it's doing is very serious, but then it's cheesy. Yeah. This movie's like, yeah, this is pretty cheesy, but also we know that it's pretty cheesy. And that makes it more palatable and watchable, in my opinion. Yeah. I like this way better than Rambo 3. So, and one had a huge budget and this one cost $9 million. So yeah. it's not apples to apples, but I'm just for an example sake. So yeah, I, I agree. I gave it a three. It's a nice middle of the road action movie. Arnold has made far better movies. And I think he's made far worse. This is probably like right in the middle of the pack 
for like Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, but it was fun. I liked it. I, I'm surprised it took me this long to watch it, but if it ever gets like a 4K, I will probably buy it. It seems like a movie that I could buy and watch. It seems very rewatchable. So yeah, I would, I would definitely purchase it. Okay, so what's your total score? My total score for this movie is a 15 out of 20. And uh, for those of you out there that are going, oh, where can I get my hands on this director's cut? Digitally, you could get it on Apple or wherever. It's uh, $14. So you could, you get, I think you get both. You get the regular or you could choose either one. You could rent it $4. Mm-hmm. You could rent each either one, the regular or the, di- uh, the director's cut. You cannot purchase this in the United States, but you could get it UK. So if you want the, a Blu-ray mm-hmm. version of this director's cut, you could get it on Zavi, which is a, a, a UK website that I purchase my UK movies from if they're not in the United States, but you could pick it up there. But anyway, I'm sorry. I, I went off on a thing, but 15 out of a 25. That's useful information for people who want to, you know, yeah. want to get that version. Um, Yeah. I'm at a 15 out of 25 myself. Good, solid action movie with a terrible villain and a very over the top nature. So yeah. as long as you know what you're going into, you know, going in, I think you'll have a nice time with it. All right. So that wraps up Arnold month. I would say a great success. We didn't watch a bad movie in this whole, in this whole lot. We watched five movies that at minimum were three or higher as far as our overall scores. So I guess you can't go wrong with that right now. Was, as far as well, I'm sorry. It was a funny thing about this one over the Stallone two ones that we did was that this is the first one that we did that went from his beginning of his catalog from the 80s all the way to present day after he got out of yeah. the director seat if you really look at it and they all so far worked out now we're gonna you know when, once we do another Arnold month we'll click in you know his other action movies plus Conan the Barbarian because that was another big one in the 80s I don't know if you've seen those Conan Eraser yeah you know um, damage. yeah he's got a lot we did yeah uh, yeah, there's a ton. He has a lot of 80s and 90s stuff that we didn't even touch. Nope. Um, and Stallone, too. We didn't do, like, we didn't do Cliffhanger. We didn't do Daylight. Daylight. We didn't do yeah. Locked Up uh, I or see Lock Up you. or whatever. Well, yeah. I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen that Over one. Over the top. Called, we didn't do a lot of movies. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever seen that. Stallone is one of those straight-to-DVDs. It's called Detox, but in the United States, it's called I See You. It's a very good movie. Think of it like Edge of Darkness, but with Stallone. Oh. I think you might like okay. it. Okay, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of we got a lot of stuff and, um, you know, plenty of time to go over them. But that's yeah. that. So next month, uh, we are starting a new franchise, which is going to be the Transporter franchise. Three out of the four movies star Jason Statham. One of the other ones stars another guy. So yeah. that should be an interesting uh, a series to watch. And then we are starting our action movies that no one talks about month. Now, these could be a mixture of things they could be very good movies that people just didn't go see or maybe they're terrible movies and that's why people didn't see them but you guys voted for these so me and alex didn't pick these and the first one up is um going to be a movie called john carter now have you ever seen john carter no so it's a sci-fi so i think people did a pretty good job with the voting this is like a space movie think like a star wars or whatever this predated all those or flash gordon of modern times pretty much so it's that kind of movie so we're going to be doing uh the transporter and john carter next week kicking off the new month oh nice all right, guys, if you, guys want to, if you guys want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything action movie, guys, podcast, go to www.youtube.com slash Levels of Geeks. Check out our podcast video version. If you want to take us on the go, please follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher. Ch- uh, search for Action Movie Guys. Download the episodes. Have fun listening to us on the go, wherever you guys go. Other than that, that is your host, Nate from Netflix Reviews. I'm his co-host, Alex Figueroa. Be awesome to each other and geek out.